Hello everyone, welcome back into the Geekverse. We're finally wrapping up our last day here at San Diego Comic-Con. It is Saturday and boy, do we have some news for you. Yeah, and we're really tired. Uh, yeah. We got to Hall H for the press line at what? 5.30? 5.30, 6 a.m. Uh, went in around 10, sat there for her another hour yeah watched oh, a bunch of panels and then waited till the marvel one which was the one that well marvel and penguin was what we were really looking, looking forward, forward to, to but it was overall our final day at comic-con mm -hmm. and it was a busy one yeah so i guess to go straight into it what was our first panel again? yeah so yeah. like because like we literally did not do anything else other yeah. than that um and it was awesome it was a great yeah. day yeah no it was so, a cool day the first panel um, that we went to was Superman and Lois. That's right. Which is a show that I've seen the first season of. Really liked it. Just I just got busy and didn't have time to catch up on it. What about you? Your perspective never. on this? Nothing. I've never seen any of the Superman and Lois yeah. stuff from CW. Yeah. But what I will say is that this panel was fantastic. Yeah. Um, as someone who doesn't really understand what's going on, they showed us a new trailer. I didn't really get what I, well, I got to the point that he was fighting Doomsday in the trailer, but other yeah. than that, I didn't understand anything else, but hearing them talk about the show made me go, I want to watch the rest of this. Yeah. The way how they were super passionate about their roles and what they mm -hmm. wanted was like really unique. Um, the director was there. The, the showrunner, show the director, runner. and then the main two leads, I think. Yeah. yeah. The show, uh, what was really interesting out of that panel is that they obviously were talking about what it takes to make a show yep. like that. And they were talking about, obviously, like, the budget cuts and, like... Specifically, the, yeah. Yeah, and, like, how much money they really had to do a show like this. And the amount of creativity that had to go into the planning of, like, oh, you know, like... Obviously, Superman just can't be Superman all the time, mm -hmm. but uh, they really grounded their show to be... Which a... is the thing that I liked in the first season, and primarily what they talked about was make... Like, we've seen Superman be this, we've seen Superman be that, but we've never seen him really be a family man with two kids and a wife. And I think that as, like, a conclusion, like a conclusion to, like, the entire show itself... Because mm -hmm. um, the show's done and filmed, it comes out in September. This was their farewell tour and their goodbye. And I thought it was very interesting how they put it into the perspective of, well, yeah, like, this is a family show in the end of the day. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, I mean, I've seen little tiny clips here and yeah. there where he, like, shows his powers. But it's, they did a really good job of balancing of, like, keeping it grounded and focusing yeah. on Family Man. And then when Superman comes around, they actually did a pretty... Decent bringing job. him to life yeah bringing him to life yeah. and the fan questions were pretty solid uh, yeah. for this one um the one of my favorite ones was the person was like who's your favorite dc hero and he's like oh, i don't know i can say you know wait no we're not coming back fuck it batman <laughs> yeah it, it was it was such good good uh timing and even lois was like i'll, I'll be your catwoman and uh I, I love their chemistry and i'm excited to go home and mm -hmm. actually like watch the rest of the show before the finale are you gonna yeah. try and watch it yeah, I actually think I will. Yeah. Um, just the way how they were acting and just how yeah. humble they were. They were cool. Two yeah. things I wanted to yeah. bring out was, uh, one, they did try to hype up this season and they showed a little bit of clips of Superman fighting Doomsday. That was cool. That, that was, was cool. actually really cool. Like, the CGI wasn't perfect. No. Mm, no. But, like, for a TV show, it looks better than some others. And you know what, too? Like... Seeing Superman and like Doomsday fighting in space was like really cool. Yeah, it was actually pretty dope. Yeah, like the fact that he like took him so far out, it, it was it was awesome. Yeah, I, that's like a concept that I never really thought mm -mm. about before. So props to them on yeah. the creativity on the fighting. And so then the second thing yeah. that I wanted to mention was what they did with Lois um, for the season, how she had cancer. Oh, I love that they touched into that. Again, having Superman have to deal with that is something so great. Like, mm -hmm. in a weird way, it, it, it's not great that she had it, but it was great to see that that's the direction that they decided to take it. So, um, if you've been following our coverage, which you should definitely go check out days one, day two, and day three, um, mm -hmm. I would give this panel an eight out of 10. Yeah, I think it was an eight for me. It too. was very it well was done. Good. And for people who don't know, we 
don't include a seven. So it's either a one through ten, skip the seven, right? Is yeah. That, is that what we say? Cool. Yeah. Um, what was the next panel? Um, Berserker. Berserker. This is the Keanu Reeves comic book one. Now, I actually want to start with our rank, our score on this one before we actually dive into it. Is that cool with you? Yeah. Okay, so give me yours. I think I give it a nine. With the announcements that they made, I thought yeah. it was really cool. Can I be honest with mine? What? I'm going to give it a six. Really? Yeah, I... It's the same thing as last time, basically. Like, I, I just, I, I like this comic a lot. I've read the first two big volumes. Um, I want to read the specials that they announced. I want to read the finale. I, I want to see the anime that they also announced at Netflix. Mm -hmm. I want to see the fucking live action movie. And just as a perspective, can we please get Gareth Evans to direct the action film? Did you ever see The Raid? Or like any of the fight scenes from The Raid? Oh, yeah. I want him to do it. He's made like two films at Netflix now. Give that him. Would be It'd be pretty dope. Um, but yeah, so b putting that aside, it's awesome to always see Keanu Reeves up there. I love them talking about Berserker, but this is like the second panel I've seen of Berserk, Berserk or Berserker. Berserker. And again, it's the same thing every time. They hype up. They say a movie's happening. They say the show's happening. Like they literally said this the same thing last time. Oh, this time they, they yeah. They said that they were making or planning to. This time, okay, we know who the writer is, but we still don't have a director. We don't have a budget. The anime was new. The anime yeah. was new, and I'll give it that. That's probably going to happen even before the movie, honestly. But it's the fact that we've already gotten that. And, every, and I love, love, love that it is a comic panel in Hall H at Comic-Con. Yeah. I love that. I just... It feels like it's a marketing thing. Come buy our book. Come buy these comics. Come buy these toys. I mean, they had a whole section when Todd McFarlane comes out with the toy. And guess what? I'm going to buy the fucking toy. It looks cool. Mm -hmm. I like the comic. I want it on my shelf right next to its comic self. So I'm giving it a six because I like Keanu Reeves. I like the comic itself. It just feels like one big fucking ad to me in the end of the day, though. Yeah, that's fair. That's so why did you give it a nine, though? I, I want to hear that. It was mostly just because of the announcement of, like, the anime. I didn't realize, too, that the movie is going to be a live-action movie. Yeah, it's a live-action well. movie, yeah. So, to me, those were kind of the, the big things. And, like, the magnum opus is obviously, like, Todd McFarlane coming out and... Yeah, just, yeah. Like, and then the ink pot the thing. We also got to say that, that they, oh, they gave yes. Keanu Reeves that. So, again, another reason I'd go mm. at six. But, again, you said I can't give it a seven. And I don't feel comfortable giving it an eight. So yeah, I have, to me, I'm going a six. To me, so. it's a nine because just like it is a comic that is at Comic-Con. And, and I love that. And that's honestly like four stars out of it all. Yeah. I just wish they focused more in on like talking about the specials. You know, they don't really dive in. We have these five specials, but they don't never really dive into like what they're about. You know, they yeah. give little tidbits and... I just wish they did a little bit more with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I feel it like was there's room bit, to be there. It was a little bit more hype than it was like explanation. Yeah, and and that's the thing. That's why I just feel like I'm I'm being sold something. And again, it's working because I'm fucking buying it. You know that's what I mean? Fair. So uh, okay, that's fair enough. Um, what do we have after that? Star Trek. Oh man. <laughs> okay. So as a perspective. If you are a Star Trek fan, this is probably your favorite two hours of your life. Two and a yeah. half hours, whatever it is. For us, it was... I, I don't want to use the word excruciating. No. Because it's not bad. It's kind of like the Doctor Who thing yesterday. Yeah. Or the yeah the day before. where It's just not our thing, unfortunately. It's not our thing. We're not Star Trek fans, mm -mm. sadly. I will say this. The Michelle Yeoh trailer... Looked awesome for like for, District 21 um, or whatever. It was Section 31. Section 31. That looked awesome. Yeah. I will give credit. Great. That actually made me go, I might watch that. But like Lower Decks, the animated series, it was fun to listen to them. I like mm -hmm. that. Uh, the first thing, I had no idea what the fuck was going on. I, I was confused why Spock was there. Um, I think we both, like we just didn't understand. Mm -hmm. uh, that was Brave New World, I think. And then the last one was a new show. Which kind of sounded interesting. Strange New World. Strange New World. And then the new one was... Brave New World's fucking Captain America. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's, what's, the, uh, what's the other... Th it was something with kids. That I liked. I liked how they showed the, when they told the kids that they got the roles. That, were, oh, you, yeah. were you awake for that? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. 
I, I like that moment. I thought that was actually really sweet and charming mm -hmm. and just really enjoyable overall. So that was for their live action comedy series. That yes, they were do. yes. So again, I like a lot of what they're trying to do, but the panel should not be two fucking hours. I'm sorry. Like, and again, people might be like, "Well, The Walking Dead is two hours." Yeah, you're you're right. And guess what? I don't think The Walking Dead should be two hours. That is fair. I think The Walking Dead should be hour and a half, 30 minutes each. 30 minutes Dead City, 30 minutes Daryl Dixon. Star Trek should have been 30, 30, 30. Mm -hmm. Or 30, 10, 30. I, I, don't, I don't know yeah. how the fuck you would have Unfortunately died, but... for like the Star Trek panel too, a lot of their shows did get... Canceled, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, they were like, this is the final season for this one. Um, but they did that for two of the shows. Yeah, I will say some viewer questions for that one. A uh, couple weren't the best. S some were pretty good. Uh, I think for me, as a... I think if you're a Star Trek fan, as we did with Doctor Who, I would probably give this like an eight. I think you'd really like it and enjoy mm -hmm. it. Maybe even a nine because of how much footage they showed. As for a non-fan... It was a four for me. I yeah. I was just kind of sitting there. I'm going to go a five because I gave the directors the directors on a five and I feel like I still mm -hmm. like Star Trek a little bit more than that. Yeah. So... Moving on, we had the EW panel, uh, Entertainment Weekly, which I'll be honest, I wasn't able to pay attention too much to that one. Um, but from what I viewed, I really liked who they had up there. And I overall thought they did a good job. Like, usually I'm not the biggest fan of the Entertainment Weekly one, but I thought this one was actually one of the better ones in no, the last they four years. a lot of like insightful information and just like experiences. Yeah, so some things kinda... that were like, what the fuck? Yeah, it was. So. It's... I'm it actually, sucks to hear, yeah. but it's definitely like. I think you got to pay attention more to this yeah. one than I did because I was running no, around. No, it was um, very like educational. Yeah. yeah what like would you give this one? Oh, I think it was like an easy eight because they were yeah, just like super felt. nice. They were really nice and just sharing about like really shitty experiences in the, in the industry and yeah. stuff. And I think it's kind of eye opening to some people who maybe not like you're even hearing people like kind of react to like their experience. Yeah. Um. So you know what? You give it an eight. I'm gonna give it a nine. I'm going to give it a nine. Even though I didn't get to fully pay attention to it, I think mm -hmm. if I would have, I probably would have been able to. And I kind of wish I would have now. Um, because what I did pay attention to, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. But, you know, I was fucking running yeah. around everywhere. I appreciate so. them. They, they did a really good job. Yeah, like, and I liked, stuff. again, who and was up did, there. Yeah, and they did do a lot of good questions. Too. Yeah. So, so let's dive into the Penguin now. Uh, Penguin was one of my most anticipated things. I think I've said this. It's my most anticipated series for the year. Uh, I love the Batman I hadn't seen a trailer until we sat down to watch this and they gave the new trailer. Mm -hmm. um, the panel was decent. It was good. It, I Again, I didn't know much going into the series and I think it was cool to kind of get an insight into the Batman world and a little bit more of like, this was actually supposed to be a part of the second film, but then we cut it because it was just so much stuff that we wanted to explore. And I think that's interesting my thing I will say about this, and I mean this in actually a compliment, and I think you actually might think it's not a compliment mm -hmm. from your perspective, I don't think. They rambled on a lot. There was a lot of rambling on. And I think in some territories, for some people, that won't work. The reason it worked for me with the rambling was because I just sat there going, they are so passionate yeah. about not just Penguin, but this world. The Batman. What Matt, Matt Reeves, the guy with the mustache, he... He's the director of this. He's the creator of all this. And he, like, when he comes out, he rambled on for, like, fucking six minutes straight. Yeah. But he's so passionate. I get it because I've been there. I've rambled on. You've probably rambled mm -hmm. on, too, about stuff where you're just so passionate you can't stop. And Colin Farrell, I love that he was in another place, but he was totally still there. But the factor that I actually got most interested in was the girl from Arkham Asylum mm -hmm. who's playing uh, Falcone's daughter. She's crazy, and I'm excited, but yeah. uh, I know you weren't that impressed, so yeah. tell me. I was going to say, it was like a six for me. Okay, I'm going to do an eight. I didn't think it was flawless, but I, I wouldn't go a six. Yeah. The trailer was cool, just like afterwards, like you said, the rambling, I was just like, okay, I understand they're super passionate, and I mean, hopefully, like, I'm guessing that they really want this world to stick. They want to build more. They, they want to build yeah. more. And I think that was the one thing is that they announced... I think the biggest announcement that actually came out of this was that they're filming the Batman next year. Mm -hmm. um, which was like... There were some rumors going around that maybe it was canceled or whatever. So Yeah. Well, do you think it's going to stick into Gunn's universe? No. 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 Not, not, not at all. 
They've are. I, I think they've even. I think what happened was James Gunn came in and he even asked, "Hey, can we connect this?" And they said no. Oh wow. So nice. um, I, I'm not. I'm not shook. I think there's there's gonna be two different Batman's eventually, and that's fine. Yeah. Or maybe not. Maybe it ends up being Pattinson gets his three films, and then that's it. And yeah. and that's okay with me. That that's okay. I didn't need any that's more fair. than that. Um, so last but not least, the big one. The big one that everyone was waiting for, which was Marvel. And it did not disappoint in my eyes. Um, I think the more and more I think about it, the more and more I'm pretty secure on a lot of things. We did an out of the Hall H reaction live. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go check that on the Zach Pope Reviews YouTube channel. But um, Phil, the energy in that room was like unlike anything else. Yeah, everyone was excited. Um to start the panel off, they did, what was it, Dead Poles? Uh, yeah, the Madonna song. They had a choir playing it, and then they had Deadpool variants or Dead Poles running through the aisles. You had Panda Pool. You had, I couldn't get a fucking picture of it. They had Dinosaur Pool. They had the Pool Floaty one. They had so many different versions of them. Mm -hmm. It was very entertaining. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, just like the cell version of Deadpool and Wolverine. It yeah. Was just and it's kind of a nice thing for like anyone who didn't get into the lottery for the Thursday showing that we got mm -hmm. to do with Deadpool and Wolverine. I thought that was actually very interesting and unique for me personally. So honestly, like I thought that was a great start. And I love when Kevin Feige came out. He goes, you know, Marvel, we don't look to the past. Let's look to the future. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say as a fan, I'm actually kind of shocked they only went over like four or five things. Mm -hmm. um, I was anticipating more, but I also think, you know, they do have D23 in two weeks, so that's probably where they'll give more information on Disney Plus series, other things like that, maybe some of the movies, maybe the actual slate. Like, I was expecting Shang-Chi too. I was expecting an update on Blade. I was expecting, uh, fuck, I don't know, a lot. But they really focused in on what's coming out next year mm -hmm. and how does that overall connect to the greater MCU. And the first thing they brought out was Captain America Brave New World, which I thought was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I thought the trailer, the new trailer that they showed us was great. We actually got to see the Red Hulk, and he looks awesome. Um, they mentioned uh, Adamantium, mm -hmm. which I think we got a really good pop in there. And then same thing with the Eternals, uh, the island, that's where Adamantium's coming from. So I like that they're finally infusing that into the MCU. But also, like, just the cast getting to talk about it, it was fun listening to them. Anthony yeah. Mackie, you can tell how excited he is to play Captain America. Oh, yeah, America. he was just hyped from the Very moment hyped. that he got on that. Talking massive yeah. shit about Tom Holland. Yeah. Which, I don't... Have you ever seen that clip? Did you get the clip? Have you ever seen the clip of Tom Holland and Anthony Mackie on the couch? Oh, you know what? I think so. So yeah. they're at, like, a Comic-Con, they're sitting there talking, and he's like, you know, like, I haven't seen the Falcon movie. Oh, oh, you don't have a movie. <laughs> and so now it's funny, because now they come back, and he's like... Well, guess what? I have a movie, and you can't be 5'11", because you're done growing. Like, all those things were so funny. And I got Harrison Ford, and then Harrison Ford obviously was there, too. Mm -hmm. So, I really liked it. I I think, what did we give it on the, the reaction? I think I gave it an 8. I think I gave it an 8, too. Yeah, I was really into it. Um, next up, we had Thunderbolts, mm -hmm. which, the more I think about it, I actually really liked. I'm going to go on 9 on this one. Oh, okay. um, Where were you, a 6? Yeah, it was a 6. I think it's going to be above average. Okay. I think, because the film literally just finished filming, I think they probably just didn't have a lot done to show us. Mm -hmm. But what they did show us really surprised me. Because I going into this, I thought it's going to be Suicide Squad for the MCU. And I genuinely did not want that. I wanted something a little bit different. And it's like kind of in the same vein as Captain America the Winter Soldier. It's a little bit more thrilling, but more of a team. Mm -hmm. And that fight scene of all the characters fighting in that one room, and then all of a sudden Bob pops out, and he's like, don't don't shoot me. Um, that's going to be very interesting to see what they do. We didn't get a lot of teases of Sentry, but um, I like Taskmaster's new suit. I like Ghost's new suit. U.S. Agent is looking awesome. And I also like how it's like more personal. Like You can just tell that all these characters are kind of dealing with something. You see U.S. Agent looking at the newspaper, and then like him out with the kid, and... Uh, Red Guardian obviously doing some other things, you know, he's trying to be democracy and whatever. All that, yeah. All that. Um, but I really liked overall what we saw from this, and I'm excited to see more from Thunderbolts. Mm -hmm. I think that's like exactly where I felt. So you're at a six, I'm at a nine. I'm going to skip that actually. I'm going to make it an eight, make Captain America an eight. Because then they did Fantastic Four. Yeah. Which... 
they obviously were hyping. You see banners all through San Diego. You see the, the fucking drone show had the damn mm -hmm. Galactus and the Fantastic Four and just hyping it up. You knew that this was going to be the big thing for here. And going in, I didn't know exactly what to expect. I expected the cast to come out, which they did. Even though they said they weren't there, they did. Mm -hmm. What I wasn't expecting, though, was that long of, like... Like, I was expecting for them to show concept art and things like that of, like, what do everyone look like? Maybe some visual effects things that they've already created. No, dude, they gave us, like, a full fucking teaser. I know. And I, I was telling you, I don't think any of that footage ever makes it, like, on the internet unless it's leaked, which it's mm. already been leaked. But um, <laughs> I, for me, oh. like, the thing with it is the fact that they brought it to life and they created this basically just for us to showcase certain things. Yeah, it was really cool. Just, yeah. Um, with the Fantastic Four movie, they decided to go ahead and make it like a 1960, like retro, retro sci-fi. And you said it perfect, Jetsons. Yeah, it literally reminds me of the Jetsons or Fallout. And, yeah. um, Fallout if the bombs never dropped. Pretty much. So it was really cool. There's flying cars, all the whole nine yards that everyone yeah. talks about. And uh, the big thing was, like, getting to space. Even their rocket ship just looked like... Yeah, it looks cool. The yeah. space suits. But the thing that really sold me was, like, it opens up and you see Reed Richards there, you know, doing a, a teaching a class. Yeah. And Pedro looks fucking great. And he has th the 1960s voice that just fits so well. Yeah. Hey, there, kids. Yeah, can you imagine when they come to like the normal MCU eventually? I'm guessing and interact with other people. Yeah, they're just gonna, gonna feel be funny. like a dated time capsule, yeah. but they're gonna be super fucking smart. Super smart because of the future they come from. But Sue Storm looks great. Uh, we didn't get a look at the thing, but we did get an outline of him, which yeah. was nice. I thought it was gonna be a Human Torch on the dating show. That's oh, what yeah. I thought it was gonna be. And then when they went the three, I was like, oh, that's cool. And then, of course, like, Human Torch, like, we didn't see him flame on, but, like, Joseph Quinn looks good. I mean, th this sizzle reel, I'm not shitting you. This is, like, literally one of my favorite things I've ever seen at Comic-Con. But also, it made me go from, I'm interested in it, to, I have to fucking see this movie. Yeah. And I legitimately think that, as of right now, this is my most anticipated project for the next year. Like, next... Next year, when I'm doing my most anticipated movies, this will most likely be my number one. Um, yeah, I'm I was really glad impressed because the previous two times of releasing three times basically, three times, you got two movies and then the yeah, I mean yeah, it's all ass. Like it's it's just it's nice good. that they finally took a step back and they're like, all right, let's just completely change how the setting is. Yeah, and change the universe and all that. And yep. now it almost. It's kind of silly and uncanny, right? But it's yeah. it almost fits so well. It fits very well. Um, it's it's touching. The the trailer was great, and we get our first look at at Galactus. Yeah, which he looked really. We cool. only was able to see like his whole. Top. You saw him kind of like pan down. So you saw a little bit yeah. of his top, but like yeah, really into that. And then it was cool because then they actually brought the flying fucking car in, and it flew around the room. Yeah, we still have no clue how they no did No idea that. how they did it. I'm sure it was wires and whatnot, but I, I was blown away by that. But then, they went away. And mm -hmm. Kevin Feige goes, they're going to be in the next two Avengers films. And speaking of those, who wants to talk about the Avengers? So Kang Dynasty is no more. And he says, we need to talk about who's going to direct it. They do a sizzle reel. Russo Brothers are announced that they're returning. They did Infinity War, Civil War, Winter Soldier, and Endgame. Mm-hmm. And I think they're a safe choice. Uh, mm -hmm. Go back to the basics of what makes everything work. I would have liked someone new, but I digress. They say, you know, this whole spiel about what brought them back, and they bring up a new logo for Secret Wars, and it, it looked fucking awesome. Yeah. But they said to get to Secret Wars, there has to be a film before that, because there's a very pivotal character that if we don't have then it just doesn't work. Yeah. And any comic book fan instantly knew it was Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom is literally the main character of Secret Wars alongside Reed Richards, which to like, there's so many angles to this, we'll talk about it in a second, but as the, it's like changing the whole room to green, you know, so the lights were changing to green and all this, mm -hmm. you see these dooms walk out and then it says Avengers Doomsday? Is that what it was? Avengers yeah. Doomsday? Which I just, that's hype. You know, it's hype. 
Mm -hmm. And then for a second, as he started talking a little bit more, I'm like, oh my God, they're going to announce who's fucking playing Doom. Yeah. And then they obviously scatter to the side and you see this guy walk out. And I'm not shitting you. Like, I know there was leaks going around with Robert Downey Jr. The second he started walking out, I'm like, it's Robert Downey Jr. Like, Mm -hmm. it has to be. Because if you get any other actor, like, there was a lot of fan casting for Oppenheimer to be Mm -hmm. uh, him. And I'm like, okay, so you put him in there. There's going to be people that get excited. But Downey is the one that's very interesting to have here. And I think while it's never really been in the comics that, like, Tony Stark ever turned into Doom, I know there's been some things where he, like, got his body transferred with Doom. And then there's been versions where he's, like, an evil Tony Stark or an evil Iron Man. But for me, in the MCU context, this works. Yeah. What do you think? I think it could definitely work with how the multiverse saga is. Yeah, he's just going to just be have a to see. Yeah, we're just going to have to see how the universe with yep. Fantastic Four is. Because is he there? Is he... Yeah. If he's not, which universe does he come from? Yeah. You know? You know, like, it's definitely how it's executed, right? Yep. It could... It could all work just simply because it's the multiverse saga. Yeah. But if they just execute it like ass, it's not going to be good. And if they build him up as Doom as a good character. And that's that's where I, I think there's so many great possibilities. I've seen a lot of people mixed on it. But I'm like, you have to look at this. He was the savior of this universe within an endgame. Mm-hmm. And now he's going to be the possible destroyer of it. Two different characters, which is interesting to him to not have to come back and play Tony Stark. He's just coming back and playing yeah. a new version but the other aspect that adds to that to me is like I think of like if Tom Holland comes in and he has to fight him, that's gonna break him. Mm-hmm. That go that boy already needs therapy. So what's gonna happen there? Um, and as well, Reed Richards, I assume Pedro Pascal, you know Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr. was the face of the MCU for ten plus years with Chris Evans. I mean, it seems like Reed Richards, Pedro, will probably be the face of the MCU after Secret Wars for the next. 10 years as well Mm -hmm. and that if they have to fight that's going to add so much of an equivalence so yeah uh any final thoughts to this i'm going to give this panel a 10 out of 10 yeah Yeah, it was was incredible it was totally worth it staying all day but any other final thoughts to the panel no not really i think they did just an awesome job yeah no i agree they hyped it up and you know what like even though they didn't really go so much into everything else that they have yeah, I think like the biggest, focusing in on right now. Yeah, I think some of the big complaints that I ever saw was like the saturation and just yeah. how much content that Marvel pumps out. Mm-hmm. And maybe who knows? Maybe less is more this time around. And I and I hope it is. Um, other than that, Phil, I guess that's the end of Comic Con. So how you feeling, man? I think this was probably the best year that we've gone so far. It's mm-hmm. personally the best year I've ever been. Uh, it just felt like a normal convention. Everything was working. Like everything I had ever heard about San Diego Comic Con. This felt like the real thing. What about you? I think this was definitely the best Comic-Con that I've been to. Yeah. What I mean, would you give the whole Comic-Con overall? I think I'd go a 9.5 out of 10. Yeah, it's definitely like a 9 for yeah. me. A high 9. Like very close to a 10. Yeah. It was almost a perfect time. So, yeah. guys, thank you so much again for watching our San Diego Comic-Con coverage. As for the podcast, I don't know if we're going to talk anymore about San Diego Comic-Con, but we will be going back to our normal podcasting probably within the next week or so. We might recoup, take a little bit of a week off to enjoy ourselves. Um, but and some on Zach, sleep. yeah, and some sleep. But on Zach Pope reviews, I have so much fucking shit coming. I have footage from Comic Con that's gonna be uploaded as shorts. I have special videos populating. I don't know. I have so much. I'm getting tired. Thank you so much again for watching this though. And of course, until next time, stay classy.